This is going to be a multi-part tutorial on how to solve the Skube Ultimate, a Skube variation originally created by the Mefferts Company. This uh, tutorial was requested quite a while ago, and I have still not gotten around to it, so I'm going to be doing this now. This will be multiple parts, and the cool thing about the Skube and its variants, which include the Polymorphinx and the regular Skube, these are Skube variants, along with the Skube 3D. The cool thing about the Skube is that even though they're all solved about the same way, the method that I have created only use, uses one algorithm. You only need to use one algorithm for this. You just need to know where and when to perform it. So for this first video, I will be showing you the basic notation, uh, which is the same as the 3x3 three three notation, but I will be showing you the basic notation, what can and can't be turned, and what you need to do to the cube, and the general steps you will be f solving. So starting with the skew ultimate, you just use the normal, the normal 3x3 uh, three three notation, except when you're holding it with one side on the bottom, you can either be holding it like this, with the two small ones of the center, top and bottom, or the two small ones, left and right. Either way that you're holding this, you can either do an R prime and an R, L and L prime, and then those are the only two moves you really need to know, because the other moves would be back and would be back and uh, back right and back left, which don't really matter. So the basic method that I will be teaching you that I have created myself is to get a center. This is the bottom center, then the four corners around it then two opposite edges into the correct spot, not necessarily turned properly, and then to move the last three into their correct spot, get the corners into their correct spot, which will also include rotating them, and then turning the centers so that the whole puzzle is complete. Now, like I mentioned, all of this uses the same basic algorithm, except it will be per performed in different ways. Not in different ways, but in different positions, and a different number of times. So this is the very simple method. And I average about a minute and 30 seconds on this cube, which is relatively fast in my opinion. So, as you may have noticed already, my cube ultimate is probably different from yours. This is because I have re my cube with 12 different colors, rather than yours, which only has 6. The two opposite colors are the same. So, opposite orange, I have red instead of orange again. So you would have these two the same. And then I also have silver right here, which you can see me right there, camera. And then I have a chrome gold as well, opposite the silver. So with the Skube Ultimate, you probably have noticed from your fiddling around with it, that when you turn it like this, when it's like this, you can turn it in a whole myriad of different ways. But when you're just turning it, and if you only turn it a little bit like this, you can't turn this side, and you can't turn this one, and you can't turn any side other than the one that you're s turning it on. So that would be half of a turn, which is not useful at all. So, you want to do full turns, which means you can only solve this cube, you can only do other turns on it, after it has returned to its original 12-sided shape. It, once it goes like this, it has acquired a, quite a few more sides. So, now that I've gone over the notation, general method, and my variation of Skube Ultimate other than yours, uh, I would like to proceed directly into the tutorial. So while I'm scrambling it, you will hear that there is a clicking or ball-bearing mechanism in this, as there are on many Mefferts puzzles, including the Pyraminx, Skube, and Polymorphix. The ball-bearings, um, some argue that it makes it high quality, and some people, like me, argue that it gets in the way. Now, the ball bearing mechanism is very unique, I do admit, but it does not make it feel very smooth. So now that my skew ultimate is scrambled, you want to choose a side to start on. When I speed solve this, I usually start on the one with silver, or the one with gold. It's kind of the same principle as starting with different crosses on the 3x3 cube. When I start with this one, I know what corners to look for. So, I'm going to start with this one with silver, yellow, teal, and purple on it. So, I'm going to hold that on the bottom. You won't be able to see it sometimes due to the camera angle and how the skew Ultimate is held, but just know that this center is always going to be on the bottom. 
these four sides are a centerpiece. So what you want to do first is move the corner pieces into their correct spot around the center. Now this is completely intuitive, but I will give you a few tips and tricks on how to do it. So first, since I'm using silver, I just need to look for pieces, corner pieces with silver on them. So the pieces that can go here and here could only be in a few different places due to the way the skew ultimate is made. It can either be here, can be in the correct spot, and it can be back here, or it can be over here on the opposite of where it needs to go. So one of them is right here, and this one needs to go right here. So what you want to do is turn it out of its spot, and then turn it so the color that needs to go on the right down here is on the right here, right down here, and then just bring it back. And there you have one. Let me emphasize one more time that this is completely intuitive, so I'll only be giving you a few tips. Now this one has silver on the left, and silver's on the front, so if I bring it down, it automatically works. So there's two. Now you turn it around, and I'm looking for pieces of the teal. One right here, and one right here. Now this piece goes right here, so if I turn it in, it works. In this case, it works. And this one's already in the correct spot. And the last one, or two of the four, could possibly have this, where it's in the correct spot, or it's over in one of these spots, and you can't just bring it straight down in there. What you want to do is look at where the teal is. The teal needs to go down, and it's on the top. So with teal on the top, when you want it to go here, you turn it, you do an R prime. If teal was right here, you do an R. So since it's on the top, you do an R prime. And then you will be turning this corner out of the way, but you turn around this piece like this, and then you bring your teal back, and it works, and then you just bring your other corner back like that. I hope that was clear enough for you, but I will do it one more time. When you're holding it like this, with the one that you're solving on the bottom, and one in front, you want to turn it kind of like this. So you're looking at the corner you want to rotate. You turn it over like this. Then this is the corner that you just moved out of here, and you rotate it. You want to rotate it down so you don't mess up this one, because if you turn it here and then try to bring it back, you'll mess up this, rota this notation. Uh, its rotation. So you want to bring it down, back over, and then up. And then you can just do that again as many times as you need. Over, down, back over, and up. So with this, I could assign different notation, but that may make it a little bit more confusing for you. I could call this the up face here, and I could call this the right face. So you want to do U prime, R prime, U, R and that will rotate this piece. And now I have showed you step one, which is choosing a center and moving the four corners around it. Please click on the link at the bottom of the screen or in the description to your right, over there, description to your right, right over there, to be taken to the second step, which is putting in two of the center pieces into their correct space.